Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So I want to start something different now and you know, I think many people have always wondered how I do the development of my games. And by those who don't know me, I'm, I'm the founder of Dilmer Games and I create minimalistic games, uh, mostly puzzle games. So I wanna, I wanna kind of bring everybody to speed about what I'm doing with, with my new game, which is Mazelistic. But not only that, I, I want to start a series of videos where, you know, we're sitting down and I'm basically walking you through everything that I do from, you know, from the, from the very beginning, from ideation to prototyping. And, you know, with this game, I'm a little bit ahead. I already, I already came up with the idea. The game is called Mazelistic. And, but I still have a lot of work to do. So, so my idea for these videos is that I can involve you in my own process. And you know, I'm gonna be showing you what tools I'm using, what kind of, what, what the process is. And, and everything that I do is very simple. It's not really complicated. I try to make things much, you know, things easier. I, I know that I can use some more advanced tools, but you know I try to keep as mo uh, the process as simple as I can so that I can I can have a lot of fun making the game, and I don't have the complexities about about some of the tools. But uh, so back back there you can see that's basically Unity. I have Mazelistic, the level level number one uh, showing, and on the other computer I have I have Trello. So, so for this game, for those who haven't, haven't seen it yet, the, the main goal is, is kind of like a golf game, so where you have to get the ball to the destination. But I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna just make another golf game. I wanted to make something completely different. And the way that this one came to be and how I came up with the idea is I went to, I went to an art gallery with my wife and we, you know, we walk into the art gallery, and the art gallery was very minimalistic. There, there was, there were a lot of bright color canvas. There was a lot of abstraction on all the canvas around the gallery. You know, as I, as I'm walking by, I, it's funny because the picture that you see on the back, it, it was one of the, it was one of the, the canvas, one of the paintings, and and the guy pretty much kept all the art style very simple. There were a lot of splashes, also just a lot of abstract abstract design and painting on his yeah on, on his art. So so I told my wife, you know, this will actually look really cool on on a game and it and it follows, you know, it has that look and feel that I like is it's pretty simple and it and it uses, you know, few colors. It doesn't use too much variation and the colors are pretty flat which is kind of kind of like the the design the 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 outlook that I always look to get so you know I, I came home and and one night I think it was you know my kids went to bed my wife went to bed I went to the basement and and I started drawing I started I got you know I opened Photoshop I also had a little notebook next to me and, and I started drawing just to just to come up with ideas and the idea that I wanted to do was, you know, I wanted to give people the perception that there are in a gallery, but I didn't actually want to create a 3D gallery. I didn't want to, I wanted to keep it simple. So, you know, I drew few galleries where, where with canvas around. I had other, I had ideas where, you know, I have one canvas and another canvas and you had to basically rotate the canvas in a certain, in a, in a certain way so that you can get one item in one canvas to the other canvas, but that just didn't. I just didn't feel good. It didn't feel right for the for the mechanics. I I wanted I wanted a mechanic that was simple and it was something that was similar to a mechanic that's that already existed. So so you know I started playing around. I drew a couple of balls and and this is that process. This is that iterate iterative process that you go to, I, I went to many prototypes, I created many prototypes in Unity, and, and somehow one of those prototypes actually, you know, actually felt right. And, you know, I had a, I had a small canvas with, with few barriers 
and I had a bowl just like it's sitting sitting on the back monitor and I, and I had a dot and I'm like oh this could just be a simple as simple as playing golf and then you know I started ask, asking me the question okay how are players gonna how, how are they gonna play the game what are the controls gonna be and so and that was a different process you know I, I started I started playing around with you know the accelerometer on the on the phone devices and then I asked the question okay how are they gonna play on a desktop how how, how are the controls gonna work for a desktop user versus a mobile user you know on a mobile user I tried things like a left and right touch so you basically had 50% of the screen on the left and 50% on the screen on the right and as you touch the left screen, the, the canvas will basically rotate and then to the left. And then if you press them on the right, it'll, it'll, it'll rotate on, uh, to the right. So, so that just still didn't feel quite right. I, I, I coded it, I put it on my phone and, and I started playing around with it. And, and I didn't really realize, but it actually, it actually felt okay. I, I was able to beat a few levels, but the levels I was playing the game as myself, so so I knew how the game worked. So I asked I asked a friend if he would be able to, to try my game, and you know the first thing he saw was the game looked beautiful. He liked the game, and as soon as he starts playing the game, I'm just watching him trying to trying to tilt the phone, move it to the left, move it to the right, and uh, you know he 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 said to me, "Don't know this." The controls don't work and you know it, it didn't dawn on me that he wasn't going to you know he wasn't going to press the the right or the left uh, the, the 50 percent and 50 percent on each side he wanted to tilt the phone because that's that's how he that's how he saw this game to be he he played other games where were similar to to this he had kind of a, like a similar look and mechanic and and in the in the game, you had to actually tilt the phone. So so that was so interesting to me because I I just didn't realize that my game gave that impression to a user. So I'm like, ah, I don't I don't think that I don't think that's that's right. He he he's probably not right. So then I gave I gave my phone to somebody else, and guess what? They did the exact same thing. And then I gave my phone to another person, and they did the same thing. So. You know, after after two or three people, I realized that the controls were were, were intuitive. So I went back home. I I changed. The, I didn't remove the control that I had because I, I I'm gonna use a similar control for the desktop version. But the 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 control for the mobile version, I com I completely changed. Now it's all accel accelerometer based. So as you tilt the phone, as you move the phone, the mace actually. Uh, moves, the canvas actually moves. So, so that was that was a realization that I had just by having people play. And so, just to get back to topic about about day one and and what I'm gonna be working on. So right now I have in my Trello board, I have a few things that I still need to get. I need to get done. One is uh, I still need to polish the control that that I that I'm that I told you about, the tilt, and I also have other things that I need to, a lot of things that I have to work on. So the next thing that I actually, I didn't come up with this issue as somebody told me just by watching the video, is that the splash. So, so if you look at the game, and you'll be seeing more about the game as I publish more videos, the the ball as, as the ball traverses through the destination is actually painting on a canvas and as each you know as the ball moves the ball is going to get smaller but as it gets smaller it's leaving marks on the canvas which are which are pain but those paint spots they don't look realistic is 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 they're not randomized so i want to randomize the the spots i also want to randomize the thickness a little bit more so it looks more realistic it's more 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 like okay I'm actually painting and every paint stroke is not precise it's not perfect and that's what I want to I want to give that perception that this is actually you know a painting and somebody's painting on a canvas 
So that, that's the next thing that I, that I have to work on. And just to kind of give you an overview of what I, what I work on already, and, and it's hard to see on the monitor, but I'll, I'll read it to you so you know that I'm, what I work on. So in Trello, I have three columns. One of the columns is the backlog. Another colu column is in progress, which are things that I'm working on right now. And then I have a done column or a completed column where I'm moving tasks from, from the backlog to in progress, from in progress to done. So in the done column, I had, I had tasks such as, you know, prototyping, prototyping the game. So uh, a game about, you know, a gallery. So that one is completed. The other one was, you know, I need, I need to create the art direction for the game and that's actually been completed. And so, so one of the things that I also do is from the very beginning, and I have a core, I have core functionality, which means that I have a template that I use uh, basically to set up my game. Because I don't want, there's a lot of repetitive tasks that I don't want to have to do every time. Even though the look and feel is going to change, there's a lot of things on the back end that don't change. So, so one of the tasks was to bring that template into, into this new game. The other task was to create a repository in the cloud. And by a repository, I mean actually creating a place where I can store my code. So that's, that's actually completed. I have another task, which is creating a level load transition. And that's a transition that you see when, so if I were, if I were to play the game, you'll see that the game has all the elements on the game. It starts moving towards the center. So if I go in, and you'll see it right there. And the music starts, the game starts. Also, the, the game stays, so if I hit pause, the game is pausing. If I hit replay, the, the game is replaying. So there's a lot of those components and tasks that, are, that were actually done. And every single one of those was a task. So the UI transitions was, was a task. The the, the UI state, if I go from pass to, you know, to gameplay and, and to the menu, those are different game states that I have to keep track on. So those were actually individual tasks. And as the game loads, I have to actually, I save the game, see, I serialize the game levels, which means that the, the games are stored in a file. And what that allows me to do is basically, if I want to make changes to the level, I don't have to go into Unity and move things manually on the editor. Instead, I can actually create a structure, which is what I did. I created a structure where, you know, every number represents something on the screen. So I'm saving the levels and I'm serializing the levels into a file. And then when the level is about to load, I read from that file. And then I basically translate the, the numbers in the file to a component in Unity. So that's been really, really helpful. I do that on, on, on the games that I can, where I can do it on. I did it in Cubix. I am I'm doing it in Mazelistic now. So that, that really speeds up the process of level design. So that was another task that I, that I completed as well. And then, yeah, I mean, that's, oh, and then I have the Game Center integration for iOS that I added which was pretty simple because I've done it in the past. So, so that's everything that I've done. I, I don't have much completed in this game other than I have 10, 10 levels done and I still have a lot of, a lot of things to fix, uh, which to reiterate, I have to fix the, the painting uh, the spots. They don't, they don't really look realistic. And then I have, a, I have a lot of things in the backlog that I have to complete. So just to give you, just to give you kind of a, an idea, one is, you know, I have, a, I have a level selector and if I have play a level, I have to grade out that level. So that when the player goes back into it, they know, into their game, they know that they play that level. So that level selector hasn't been, I haven't worked on it that much. So I have some other stories that are coming back, that are coming up. And I also have, I want to add collectibles to the game. So I might want to, I want to have few 
things that you have to pick up if you pick up on the on the game as you traverse the canvas. And what that's going to allow me to do is going to allow me to let people paint a, a speaker. So let's say I want I want I wanted to paint a circle. I would place these uh, items around in a circle in a circle manner. So as they're picking up these items, it's actually drawing a shape. That's an idea, and a lot of these things they might not fit into the game really well, but I won't spend too much time on it. So I will try to code it, I will do it, and you'll see the results as we work on, on these videos. And then I still need to work on sound and music, so those are stories that are coming coming up. I have a lot of modeling stories, so I, I do all the 3D on this game, and mainly because it's, it's pretty minimal. There's not a lot of sculpting, so I, th these are things that I can I can easily do. So I have two different tasks in here about you know creating 30 to 50 different assets, uh, and I have also another another one for you know actually creating kind of like different environments because I, I I like to keep levels in a genre, so I might create a section of levels. I, I might do okay 20 levels that have these set of colors and this style and then I will create 20 other levels that have you know that it keeps it, it keeps a, the levels in sections so each section has its own style another section has another style in which those styles come different model model pieces and, dif and different colors so I have other tasks that I'm that I that I'm working on for those uh, I also have you know I have to create a tutorial screen to show the user uh, I might not need to do it. It depends on on how how I go about teaching the user on the first few levels. A lot of times I teach the user enough and I give them enough information and, and basic levels at the beginning so that they learn the process. So sometimes you, you don't need a tutorial and for the most part I recommend that you don't have a tutorial unless you really need it. So I have it in here just, just in case. Uh, and a lot of these are going to be answered as I get other people to play the game. And let's see, coming up I have, I have some social, uh, so I want to be, I want to have, I want to have capabilities to let players share the level. So if they take a screenshot of the, of the, of the level right in the game, I, I want to be able to, you know, have them share that. Because that's going to bring, you know, that, that's going to expose your game into into more people. So I try to always have social capabilities inside the game. Because that helps a lot with exposure and you want those people to find your game. So the more that you do of that, try not to do too much of it, but at least have have the capability and the feature where you allow them to share to share the game to Twitter, to to Facebook and some of those main main social media outlets, and then yeah, and then and I have many other tasks. So, so the, this video was basically to walk you through what I have done for the game so far, and what tracking software do I use, and actually giving you a heads up on some of the things that I'm gonna be working on next. So my goal for these videos is gonna be, okay, so on day one, um, I'm introducing you to the project, I'm telling you about what things I worked on, uh, and you know, if I use level design, how is the level design goes about, uh, what, kind of, what kind of things do I do in level design. So, so right now you know what I did, you know what I'm working on, and you know what the future stay is. So the future stay is that I have there's still a lot of tasks to work on and that I want to release these for iOS, I want to release it for the Apple TV, I want to release it for Steam. And so, so there will be a lot of questions, a lot of answers that I give you as we get into this process. You know, you might ask a question about, so how do you release into Steam? How, how do you make sure that this game works for multiple platforms? And that's something that I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be creating more videos and you'll, you'll be learning about, about that process. So just, just, just stay tuned by, just make sure that you, you keep watching the videos because I'm going to be, I'm going to be working on these hands-on and I'm going to be explaining to you 
why I make some decisions, and I actually want to get feedback from you as well in the comments about about the game, about some of the decisions that I'm making, and and I think at the end of the day is the if I if I get more answers from people, if I give them more information, I think information that I get from from the users is so is so critical, and and if you think about the example that I gave you at the beginning where where I thought that the control was intuitive and it was actually intuitive until I have somebody else look at it and multiple people look at it. That's basically what I want to do with these videos. So thank you again. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate all of you. And don't forget to subscribe and to share the video because that helps me in creating more videos. So again, this is day one for creating an indie game, a minimalistic indie game. In this case is Mazelistic. And I'm pretty excited about day two. I'm gonna I'm gonna be working on these spot fixes, and I'm gonna be working on it with you. So thanks again, guys. Dilmer again.